Back for blood proves Valve carried Left for Dead. Oh. Uh, we haven't played Back for Blood, but what I've heard is that it's a very polarizing game where they just say that it's not that... People have said that this game, it was not that great. I said it just wasn't that great. Um, I haven't played any of it. I didn't play the beta. Like, I wasn't inv invited. I didn't fucking play the game because I didn't buy it. But I heard this game is not that great. And also, I kind of want to watch this because it's a Crobat video. And this dude posts a video once every year. But when he does, they're pretty fucking good videos. for us to just show them stuff. They'd be like, here, check this out. We had a prototype up and running. Keep in mind, at this point, you know, the environment is all just big gray boxes. It's not pretty at all. The infected are still the sort of cheesy terrorist zombies. I mean, it was already fun. So then it was just like, well, now we just gotta make it look good. Of Turtle Rock Studios. I like uh, that this edit. This is pretty TV. exciting for all us Left 4 Dead fans. Of course, uh, you guys are known for all the amazing work, Left 4 Dead, and now you're building uh, this on uh, building on the legacy with this new zombie co-op shooter. Uh, what's new? What can you tell us about it, Chris? Well, we wanted to do more and bigger, right? You know what? I always wonder why didn't the devs just make a Left 4 Dead 3? Like, why didn't they just ask them, "Hey, can we make Left 4 Dead 3?" Like officially, like fucking light, take the IP and make it. Was it, was it, is it really because Valve just doesn't make third games? Is that really why? Could it be? Okay, here we go. Here's the gameplay reveal of Back for Blood. Not me. You all lost people. Lost someone close. Yikes. Oh, so I'm to blame? Oh, fuck no. Is this game broken or something? I haven't seen anything about it. <laughs> oh no. Okay, this looks like a flaming piece of shit. Is this just the bad, like, footage? Because uh, we're two minutes into it, and this looks completely fucking broken. Thank you. There's not much, uh, there's not much gore, is there? I'm noticing. In Left 4 Dead, you would shoot body parts off of the zombies and they'd keep running at you. This game, they just kind of like, they stay solid a lot and just blood splatters out of them, I noticed. Since killing zombies is such a big part of this game, we invested a lot of time into making their death animations more dramatic than simple ragdolls. We had a professional stuntman on a motion capture stage perform about a hundred different dying animations from different kinds of weapons and hit from different directions, like from the front or behind. We then combined these mocap animations with the physics-driven ragdolls. The result is a really cinematic experience, with zombies that stumble for a few steps into a wall, then slide down the wall and collapse for That's a cool. It's the best of both worlds. By the way, I'm referencing Left 4 Dead 2 when I say the body parts, because in this one, you, I don't think there was. Actually, maybe I'm thinking of Killing Floor. Which is also, Killing Floor 1 was fucking badass. 2 is still good, but 1 was badass.
<laughs> the body just goes instantly to the ground. Okay, so the animations suck. That's the first weakness. Treat the infected horde as a major character in Left 4 Dead and spend a lot of effort in making their movements believable. The common hordes stagger around, cough, vomit, fight amongst themselves, lean against walls, sit on the oh, wow. ground, and lie down as part of their wandering behaviors. When they see a survivor, they become enraged, taking off in a full sprint, leaning into their turns, trying to get to their victim. <laughs> oh, come on. He's trying his best. We wanted to express this rage in their faces as well. Mid, gotcha. So we found efficient ways for each member of the horde to make intense facial expressions. You don't have to be a fucking rocket scientist to see the animations are kind of they're kind of night and day. It was a challenge to create this diversity of looks for common infected and take advantage of unique clothing or uniforms in specific areas. For instance, lots of TSA agents are spawned in the airport, hospital patients around the hospital, Damn, cops in the asses. streets, office employees in the offices, etc. It helped to reinforce the sense of a vest epidemic. We wanted to add further variety to Left 4 Dead 2's campaigns, so we extended this notion when we added the mud man, the clown, the construction <laughs> worker, and the riot cop. I mean, look. I don't think anybody was expecting this game to be Left 4 Dead. I think they were expecting it to be a Left 4 Dead-like game. The issue is, you've already got hardcore fans of one series that are under the impression, hey, it's made by the same developers that made Left 4 Dead, so this shit's going to be pretty damn similar to it. And maybe it is to some people, right? But in terms of comparing the two, it definitely looks like a, like a watered-down version from the comparisons. I haven't seen the rest of the game, though. Oh man, the fire animations are fucked. Look at that animation, holy shit. Okay, you can dismember. Something's off. I can feel it. See, Since players spend the vast majority of their time shooting the common infected, we wanted to improve the feedback that. and visceral. You could fucking blow a hole in them with the deagle. Nature of this experience. In Left 4 Dead 1, we provided only the ability to shoot off limbs. Now, in Left 4 Dead 2, there are 43 unique ways to damage an infected. Oh my god. 
God damn. Because many of these wounds are non-fatal. Wow, you could blow their fucking jaw off? I didn't even know. Half the time you're not even paying attention to this, but the fact that you can go back and check out, wow, look, I can shoot the jaw off a fucking zombie, and it sits there with its fucking, just like, it's just hanging off. That's sick as hell. Players are able to win. You can shoot the crotch off. ...and infected more than once, resulting in about 780 possible damage combinations. I told you you could do that shit in Left 4 Dead 2. It seems so, like, but it's done better. Oh man. It's so fucking watered down. That one's not so bad. Down. That's. That's so satisfying. Damn, look at that fucking thing. It ended up in pieces. I mean, you can see the, the gibs and shit are much more, like, emphasized, right? The way that they become, like, pieces and splatters and shit. Say what you will. Valve doesn't make three equals, but man, they can make a fucking good ass game. Reloading. They can make a damn good game. Oh my god, you can't even wall bang. Oh man, that TV damage is fucking not satisfying. It is that bullshit where the you just make bullets. The environments in Left 4 Dead are geometrically complex and littered with breakable. You can just fucking destroy everything. I remember. You get into a tight room, there'd be a shitload of zombies. You get into a fight, and there's just bullets going everywhere. So the fucking room has just littered with bullet holes and shit's broken. And it was so cool. And movable. But you wouldn't notice it because it was happening. You had such like. So it was such a shit show sometimes when you go into a room and you get into a fight. You would never even acknowledge the little details that now you you compare it to a game that came out this year and you're like, wow, that or well, last year technically. You're like, damn, that's fucking ass. Objects. But that was, by the way, like this isn't exclusive to Left 4 Dead. This is like Source Engine in general did this. Source Engine is just fucking ridiculously cool. That's why, you know? So all Source games, if you played CSGO or uh, Counter-Strike Source, all the Source games had that same physics engine. It was incredible. Okay, well that's a bit much. The TV fucking damn. Like, look at that. Portal was like that too. Is Portal Source engine? I think it was, yeah, obviously. Now I'm in the mood to play some fucking Left 4 Dead. <laughs> I already I have Left 4 Dead too. I may as well play that shit. Jeez. What? It dies in like 10 seconds. This restaurant was one of the first areas we populated with tables and chairs. In early playtests, the survivor would pop a boomer, and the resulting explosion sent tables and chairs flying everywhere. That's awesome. It was a great effect. We decided to furnish a That's few awesome. more areas like this, so that more players would be likely to experience it. That's so cool. On epic mode, it doesn't even fucking add any effects.
Lights on. In Left 4 Dead, players carry flashlights to illuminate the environment. These shadow casting light sources not only add surface richness and provide important Atmosphere. visual depth cues, they tie into gameplay. Shh. Witch, turn it off. Because a player's flashlight is attached to his or her weapon, the light becomes pointed off to the side when reloading or performing a shove attack. That's awesome. <laughs> Like so many of Left 4 Dead's game mechanics, this encourages cooperation, as players know they may be left in the dark if they choose to reload at the wrong moment. That's fucking awesome. Cut across country will save you time on foot. Send in another crew to hold the post once things calm down. Right now, I need you to get to the apartments. In playtests, people were often confused by certain events and elements in the game. You know what I just realized? What what it looks like the game does in Back for Blood is the game is more like walk into an area, kill all the zombies, move on. And that's a lot of Left for Dead. But it felt like in Left for Dead, especially when you were playing online, a lot of the game was let's ambush them. Let's fucking wait for the perfect moment for a boomer to come out and set up an ambush with a horde. Then we'll go and we'll fucking do a crazy amount of attacking, like, together, synchronized. And it feels like, it, like even when you were playing single player, that shit would happen. The, the other game felt like as soon as you walked into the area, the zombies were waiting. And they were like, oh, it's time for us to fight. Okay, let's go. The addition of musical cues... Like, it doesn't look like there's many quiet moments. ...has helped distinguish these events and diminish player confusion. Players who leave the music on are treated to a variety of subtle audio cues that not only deepen the horror experience, but make them better players. <laughs> That's awesome. We base the music on what the player is actually experiencing and not on what we want them to experience. Just falls over. <laughs> we keep the music appropriate to each player's situation and highly personalized. The music engine in Left 4 Dead has a complete client side multi track system per player that is completely unique to that player and can even be monitored by the spectators. This shit looks so fucking unintense. I don't know if this is because of the difficulty level. One difficulty with the tank was that since we offset his incredible toughness by slowing him down a bit, when tank battles occurred in large outdoor spaces, he was far less effective. To offset this vulnerability, we added his rock throw and car slugging abilities. this for me <laughs> how are you shooting behind it there easy now thanks 
I like that. Ah. 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 <laughs> One more scar for the collection. Who the fuck shot me? Watch where you move in the future. Oh! <laughs> that looked so bad. Woo! Don't think I'm coming back out. Mom, please! You need to take better care of that wound. Breaker, over there! This is our world. And we're taking it back. While there are hundreds of infected types mobbing the player and left for dead, there are only four survivors. To make sure these four stood up to close scrutiny over many hours of playtime, we decided to use photographic reference of faces and wardrobe details. That wasn't necessary, but thanks. We started out by casting four individuals who fit the general design concepts we had created for our characters. Oh wow, really? They based it on Switch. someone? There's someone that looks like Zoe in real life. Oh my god. I must find this person. <laughs> the talent was guided through a matrix of facial expressions. Okay, let's do it. Creating a complete catalog of movements and expressions for each character's face. Got it. This is an invaluable resource for our modelers and animators when they start to recreate these expressions in three-dimensional models. <laughs> no, Lewis. Is that Bill from Dead by Daylight? It just so happens it is. Bill, just use borrowed time, dude. You'll save Lewis easily. <laughs> Fucking morons, why didn't they bring Dead Hard? <laughs> Jesus. Holy crap. Holy shit. There. You see? It works. Fuck yeah. One of our goals when designing the four survivors was to have a very diverse group of real world characters who fit in the post apocalyptic storyline, but that also have heroic and aspirational qualities. They're changing. God. Damn it, Bill! Oh, it stinks! <laughs> Bill was a challenging design problem when it came to finding the correct balance between realism and idealism. In our first attempts, we made him look a bit too old and frail, which made him seem physically incapable of fighting against the Horde. In our final design, we balanced the character backstory and the aspirational qualities, portraying Bill as a once heroic army veteran, who though older and wiser, can still excel at physical combat. That's Badass. Not. At least that's what we call her because she's tough, doesn't take shit from anybody, and always knows exactly what to say. Welcome to the shit show. Yep, that's me. My name is Holly. Just your run-of-the-mill college kid with a baseball bat. But I can also be a real softy on the inside. You know, I'm sort of the glue that holds the whole team together. Look, I can't shit on them for making characters, okay? You're not gonna make four fucking iconic characters like you did. Oh my god, they're not as iconic as fucking Bill, Francis, uh, Zoe, and, uh, and Lewis, okay? Oh my god. Hell, even, by the way, even Coach. Coach and fucking... I can't remember their name. The process behind designing Zoe's character wasn't as straightforward as the other three. Developing a young female in a zombie apocalypse isn't easy with a backstory like hers. Someone's still alive. She had to be attractive and worn down at the same time. Every time I see this shit, I see Meg. Because Meg can get that one outfit that looks like Zoe. And I think of fucking Meg. She needed to be tough and able to hold her own. And I hate she's Meg. occasionally terrified. Flashlights off. Her readability was also something we Different had to story. take into gotcha. consideration. While we were developing Left 4 Dead, oh my we God, it's Gabe Newell. A game called TF2, 
And Team Fortress 2 taught us a lot about things like read hierarchy and other queuing tools that you need to have in a multiplayer environment. We also wanted to push harder on the horror art direction, so one of the last things we're doing with the game before we ship it is we're redoing all of the survivor characters. Build Four that characters were designed as a unit, so that while I stand out together from the rest of the world, their strong silhouettes and color contrast provide clear reads for each individually, yet a signal team. We wanted to conjure four survivors that could resonate realistically and thereby complete our horrifically rendered version of the zombie apocalypse, which you, the player, now find yourself in. Like I said, so we I have this uh, thing called versus mode, where you can play for the multiplayer. When you would get when you would get to play as the tank, it was like the best feeling on fucking earth. It would say tank being chosen and said, You're the tank. It's like, it's show time! And I'd fucking run out there, beat the shit out of all of them. I'd hit them with one fucking car. Game's fucking over. Go next. You lose. I'd play as a fucking hunter. I would just wait. I would just wait. Just let them fucking cross an area where they can't recover, where they can't go back. I'm fucking jumping on their teammate. I'm gonna kill them. I'm gonna be the one that fucking dominoes this game. It, the versus mode was sick as fuck. And if you, had a, if you were with a group of friends like playing versus and you were with a group of survivors see survive with friends was different because survive with friends in left for dead was fucking balanced because you were going against zombies and the special infected in this shit or in dead by daylight it's one killer and one killer only and if you're playing nemesis he has one fucking zombie or two and half the time they're useless versus four survivors that can be fully communicating with easy objectives to do like anyways fuck survive with friends that's the whole point Four survivors playing as humans with four infected, but this time as humans. And what they try to do is the survivors try to get to the end of a map. In fact, they try to stop them. And we recently got to see uh, how PvP is going to be expanded. It was such a simple concept, too. It was such a simple concept, but they did it like... They did it perfectly. Like it's pretty much the same fucking game as single player. Do you want to do you want to jump into that and and talk about that newly announced experience? Yeah, sure. Uh you queue up with three of your friends. You go into a, a match and uh you're playing a best of 3. So you play two rounds and it's whoever lasts the longest on the cleaner side is the winner. So it's not going to be quite the entire campaign what? where people make their way from level to level and then swap. It's very much Here's a hyper-focused area designed around the swarm mode, and then you're just going to have to survive longer. That's, ex that that's exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. That sounds... One of the concerns that, that were raised by people who had Left 4 Dead is, you know, uh, what's different enough about this to justify it being a new sequel? So we've spent a lot of time talking about what the scope is, both artistically... Oh, Ellis, um, Coach. I remember Ellis and Coach. Re oh, Rochelle, Ellis, Coach, and what the fuck is the dude in the white suit's name? In terms of the scale of the game, not remember how the gameplay is evolving, what are some of the technological pieces that have moved forward, and doing anything we could to make sure that our fans, who are the reason that we exist, the reason that we have a business, understood why Left 4 Dead 2 was a really positive evolution, uh, rather than just us trying to come up with a way of... Nick. Uh, you know, stripping money out of a That's successful and popular game. Who the hell puts an evac station of 30 flights of goddamn stairs? Hello, coach. Maybe the helicopter. Maybe chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> 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 the mod support. That's another thing. Because the helicopter obviously is made of chocolate. The mod support this game has too is fucking ridiculous. Turning all the zombies into skeletons. Turning all the zombies into Teletubbies. Making the zombies into anime ladies with big titties. There's a million fucking mods for this goddamn game. You can be shooting a fucking octopus instead of a, an Uzi. You can throw instead of Molotovs. You can throw babies. You can do a million fucking things. Because of the Steam Workshop. You <laughs> see? Like... <laughs> to die now. Helm's deep map? What the fuck? Pipe bomb! <laughs> <laughs> the fall guy? Is Back for Blood gonna facilitate the modding community at all with the online element, or is it gonna 
purely be contained game files it's contained we're at, at launch for sure yeah we're not gonna have anything like that available then for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you listen closely you can hear my heartbreak <laughs> <laughs> that's why i did so yeah oof valve retains left for dead and they signed us back our logo and name mike's decided he was done running his own studio here to talk about the co-op shooter is project lead mike Ruth. i think at the time he was really enjoying not being the boss so he said i don't want to run turtle rock 2.0 we've had to sit by for the past 10 years and watch other people sort of riff on something that we created. As creators of Left 4 Dead, from the award-winning creators of Left 4 Dead. Creators of the critically acclaimed Left 4 Dead franchise. Made by the creators of Left 4 Dead. Uh, no. <laughs> Make sure the 360 was up to snuff. Make sure the PC is polished and it's gonna be spectacular now. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, both of those I really put a lot of thought into replayability. You can pull people back around corners that they thought they'd already got past and it's kind of, it's, it's a really interesting space for that, for verses in particular. Oh man, really they're all Valve. There's such a strong fan base for Left 4 Dead 1. Left 4 Dead characters, there's a lot of agonizing over what's the cast of characters, who's going to want to play them, who are they in this world. The action was sort of procedurally... Damn, the writer, level designer, composer, artist, they're all Valve like employees that did worked on it oh shit generated and so we were never really sure how much time we had before there was going to be a hundred zombies running at you once you make debugging 10 times faster it becomes feasible to do something that was infeasible before because of the debugging cost what we did was we used blood splats to differentiate similar textures and added some grind to them now time finally arrived we said a hard date this time i'll tell you i believe you chance I would like a long sleeve shirt that has the Left 4 Dead logo on it. I would enjoy that a lot. And it'd be quality. The goal of the director was to create kind of peaks and valleys in this estimated arousal level. Players were not as cooperative as we hoped, um, and we didn't know why. You guys refuted a rumor about experimental Left 4 Dead psychology, 3, and I hear the giggling already. So we're going to continue <laughs> with this. Damn. Because you're playing the same mission a bunch of times, if we played the exact same line at the exact same location, it would be rapidly very tiring. What we wanted at Valve was to create uh, an experience of playing through a really good horror film. Moby goes on to lead art direction for Team Fortress 2, then works on titles such as Left 4 Dead. But I also worked on Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> oh my god! It was, it was all Valve! Wait a minute. Only those people were the ones that made Back for Blood? Of all these people on this list, these are the only ones that were from, that were credited? Seven fucking people? Of all of these people, and they said from the developers of Left 4 Dead? I thought it was like the whole team working on this shit. It was literally just like three people. <laughs> <laughs> All they did was they say, hey, technically I worked on it, so I'm a developer of Left 4 Dead. And that guy worked on it, he's a developer of Left 4 Dead. Holy shit, you could see why this game, why that game is a fucking shadow of Left 4 Dead. It's just not, wow. Mixed. <laughs> the creators of Evolve. Holy shit. That's a good fucking video. And by the way, the ending of that video it shines extreme fucking light. That shines extreme light on why that game is not as good as Left 4 Dead. Wow. That was a hell of a video. God damn. That's crazy.